All right, so let's apply this to an example. So the problem stated in this slide is when lithium is illuminated with light, one finds that it has a kinetic energy of 2.935 times 10 to the minus 19 joules at 300 nanometers. And in a second experiment, there is a kinetic energy of 1.280 times 10 to the minus 19 joules when the wavelength is 400 nanometers. And so the problem is asking us to calculate what is the Planck's constant h, what is the threshold frequency nu naught, and what is the work function phi. And so the picture again that I want you to imagine here is that in one experiment I have a lithium block, and I'm going to shine 300 nanometer light onto it. And because I'm shining light of this frequency onto it, or this wavelength, then I'm going to be ejecting out electrons. And these electrons have a kinetic energy of 2.935 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And in a second experiment, I have my same lithium block, but in this case I'm going to be shining on 400 nanometer light. And out of this block will come shooting electrons and they have a kinetic energy that's equal to 1.280 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now in the previous couple of slides, what I was telling you is that as the frequency goes up, then the kinetic energy also goes up. And the one thing I want you to remember with these two experiments that we have set up is that the relationship between frequency and wavelength is related to each other by this wave equation. C is equal to nu times lambda, where C is the speed of light. Nu is equal to the frequency. And lambda is equal to the wavelength. So since the speed of light is a constant value, that never changes, then as the frequency goes up, so if nu goes up, then that means that the wavelength, or lambda, has to go down. And what that means then is I can write a similar type concept that I have here, except that I'm going to be writing as lambda goes down, then the kinetic energy is going to go up. And we see that that's exactly what happens here. In this picture with the 400 nanometer light, I have a kinetic energy of 1.28 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. I decrease the wavelength, or the lambda, to 300 nanometers, and that the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons goes up. So in these two pictures, the experiment remains consistent with what we would expect from the photoelectric effect. So the problem is asking us first to solve for Planck's constant h. And I want you to remember that Planck's constant h was the slope of the line that we saw in the previous plot. And the slope again, or the equation, the base equation was the kinetic energy is equal to h nu minus the work function. But in this case, since h is going to be the slope, we know that the independent variable is the frequency, and we know the kinetic energy was the dependent variable, then what we can write then is an equation that talks about rise over run is equal to slope. So I could say ek1 minus ek2, that's equal to h, and that's going to be times nu1 minus nu2. Again, here we've got the rise, and here's the run. The rise being the ek1 minus the ek2, and the run being the v1 minus v2. And so then, I can directly substitute in for the kinetic energy. And so what I'm going to get there is 2.935 times 10 to the minus 19. I'm going to subtract off 1.280 times 10 to the minus 19. H is the value that we're trying to solve. And in this case, what we're going to find is that the value that I'm going to put in these parentheses, well, since the problem gives us the value of light in terms of wavelength, then let's just directly substitute in that value. And so we can see again here back with this equation that relates the speed of light to the frequency of the light times the wavelength, we can then rearrange and we could say that the frequency in any given case, well that's just equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So we can then write that in directly. Speed of light divided by lambda 1 minus the speed of light divided by lambda 2. And I'll rewrite that one a little bit better. 
That means on the left hand side I'm going to get 1.655 times 10 to the minus 19 and that's when I do this subtraction. On the right hand side I get H. I'm going to pull out the C, I'm going to distribute it out. So I'm going to get 2.998 times 10 to the 8. And inside these parentheses I'm going to get 1 over 300 times 10 to the minus 9 minus 1 over 400 times 10 to the minus 9. And again I want to make sure that my units are in standard SI units being kilograms, meters, seconds. So that's why I'm writing these frequencies, or sorry, these wavelengths in terms of meters and not in terms of nanometers. So I'm going to continue to solve this problem. I'm still going to get the 1.655 times 10 to the minus 19. That's equal to H. I'm going to be multiplying that by 2.498 times 10 to the 14. And so when I eventually solve for h, what I'm going to get is 6.625 times 10 to the minus 34. And this value is going to be in joule seconds. Now I want to stand back for one sec or step back for one sec and just point out that this value for h is a very remarkable result. And it's very remarkable because we've come to a value for Planck's constant which is almost identical to the value that we calculated or that was calculated for black body radiation and that basically we have two completely different physical phenomena where the quantization of energy is in two completely different places in this case with the photoelectric effect it was we quantized the energy of the photon but before in the black body radiation example we were quantizing the vibrations of electrons but in both these cases, we were able to get the exact same constant of proportionality, Planck's constant, the 6.625, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. And so this fact, the fact that when this came out, when the second um, place where this value naturally arose, forced skeptical scientists to rethink their classical worldview and that maybe this, this quantized nature of, of energy was something that was far more widespread than just originally thought. All right, so the next part of our problem is going to be to determine the value of the threshold frequency. And so to do this, we're going to go back to the original equation. The kinetic energy is equal to h times the frequency minus h nu naught. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the data from the 300 nanometer experiment. You can use the 400 nano experiment. It's just, in this case, I'm just choosing to use the information from the 300 nanometer experiment. And so what that means is that the kinetic energy is going to be equal to 2.935 times 10 to the minus 19. That's equal to, I'm going to write Planck's constant that we just calculated, 6.625 times 10 to the minus 34. And in reality, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. But for the sake of this problem, to keep things consistent within the measurements that were made for this problem, we're going to maintain this value of Planck's constant. I'm going to reintroduce the value, the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8, divided by 300 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And this is in lieu of the value of the frequency, I'm just putting in directly the value C over lambda. And from that I'm going to be subtracting off Planck's constant, the one that we just measured a second, calculated a second ago, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 times nu naught. And so in this case all I'm going to do is just rearrange and I'm just solving for nu naught. So I'm going to take this piece over here, I'm going to move it over to the other side, I'm going to take this piece right here, and move it over to the other side of the equal sign. And so what I'm going to be left with is 6.625 times 10 to the minus 34 times nu naught. That's equal to, and so if I end up evaluating this middle term right here, what I'm going to end up getting is 6. Point, whoop, sorry, let's write that in black. 6.62 times 10 to the minus 19. I'm going to subtract off from that 2.935 times 10 to the minus 19. 
And the value in the end that we end up solving for for nu naught is 5.564 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And so remember what this value represents. If I plot a value of frequency versus kinetic energy, then that value represents the first value that we actually measure any electrons being ejected from our so from our lithium surface. And so this value right here, this 5.564 times 10 to the 14 hertz, that is that value right there on our plot. And so any value less than 5.564 hertz, that value will not eject any electrons whatsoever. So the final piece to this problem is to calculate the work function phi. And again, this work function, this value is the minimum energy required so that an electron can be ejected from the metal that we're talking about. And in this case for lithium, phi is equal to two values that we've just calculated, the Planck's constant and the threshold frequency. So we're just going to input those two values that we just calculated, 6.625 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by 5.564 times 10 to the 14. In the end, we're going to get 3.687 times 10 to the minus 19 joules.